In this video, we're going to be showing you how to plan a simple paddle around tidal current going in and out of a bay. This is just a basic overlook of how to look at a tidal graph, understand it, and then go out and use the current to your advantage. You can get a lot deeper with this and calculate the speeds and the drift and how much the current's going to affect you throughout the day. And again, this video is just showing you how to go with the current and not against it. Before going out on the ocean, you need to look at a tide chart, or graph of a tide chart. We'll come back to these in just a minute. In the Puget Sound, NOAA maintains around 130 tide prediction stations. At tidesandcurrents.noaa.gov, you'll be able to find a tidal prediction station for your area. There are also plenty of other websites that produce tide charts out there. A tidal graph is a visual representation of what the tides will do at the station you have selected for that day. In this example, we've selected Tracyton on the Dyes Inlet between Bremerton and Silverdale, Washington. In order to talk about tidal currents, we first need to define a few terms. Tides are the vertical rise and fall of the sea. Tides are caused by the gravitational tango with the moon and many other factors, like centrifugal forces and even high and low pressure systems. This is a whole different topic for another time. Currents are the horizontal movement of water. Tides are one cause of currents. Now that we understand that, we need to understand the terms flood and ebb. In a simple bay like Dyes Inlet, when the tide rises and the bay fills up with water, this is called the flood. So generally, from the time between the low and high tide in a bay, we'll see a flood. And generally, when the tide drops back down, the water retreats back out of the bay. This is called the ebb. The transition time between flood and ebb is called the slack tide. This can be a period of tranquility, or in some areas, a period of turbulence, depending on the geographic forms surrounding the body of water. In the Puget Sound, we have what is called a mixed semi-diurnal tide cycle, with two high tides and two low tides in a 24-hour cycle. That means a tidal exchange occurs roughly every six hours. As you can see, these time estimates are rough, and it is actually closer to a 24-hour and 50-minute cycle, but it is helpful to build the framework of understanding. This means there are two periods of flood and two periods of ebb each day. Within one of those six-hour periods, we can apply what is known as the rule of twelfths to have a general rule of thumb for how fast the currents will be. Within the first hour, one-twelfth of the volume of water will be moving. The second hour, two-twelfths of the water will be moving. The third hour, three-twelfths of the water. The fourth hour, another three-twelfths of the water the fifth hour back down to two twelfths, and the sixth hour back down to one twelfth. So how does this affect the current? The less water that is moving means less current, and more water moving means more current. So we have less current during the first and last hour when one twelfth of the volume of water is moving, and more current during the third and the fourth hour in the middle of the tidal exchange when three twelfths of the volume of water is moving. With just this knowledge alone, we would have a pretty good idea of what currents would do throughout the day in Dyes Inlet or any simple bay with one inlet. It is worth noting that the slack, flood, and ebb do not always exactly match up with high and low tide. As the landforms become more complicated than a simple bay, the current becomes harder to predict, and in the Puget Sound and many other areas, there are resources that can help you better predict what the current will do. For the example of Dyes Inlet, that we will be paddling in the Puget Sound, there is the Graphic Current Flow Pattern Book. This book gives pictures with arrows that show how the surface current patterns evolve throughout the tidal cycle. There is also a very useful one of these for the San Juan Islands. For the Puget Sound book, all the pictures correspond to the Bush Point station on Whidbey Island. So you Google the tides at Bush Point and then use the book. We want to go from Bremerton, Washington to Silverdale, Washington roughly five nautical miles or so. You can use Google Earth to draw out and measure this distance. Or you can find your favorite bottle of aged gin and set up next to the hearth with some dividers and plot the distance. The average kayaker travels roughly 1.5 knots, basically 1.5 miles per hour. So to go five miles, this would take three hours or so with no current and no wind. 
we know that we want to catch a flood into Dye's Inlet and an ebb out of the bay. A quick look at the Tracyton station reveals that our best bet is an early morning paddle to go with the tidal current in and out of the bay. We'll shoot to paddle with the current from around 5 a.m. to arrive in Silverdale around 6.30 in the morning. For the return from Silverdale to Bremerton, we want an ebb. The max ebb is around 9 a.m., about halfway between the high and the low tide. We'll shoot to drink coffee and eat pastries in Silverdale from 7.30 or so until about 8 a.m. Another thing to think about is the shape of landforms. Currents tend to concentrate in constrictions, usually at the mouth of a bay or an inlet. This is an extremely simplistic look at tidal currents and how to go with them and not against them. You can spend a lot more time calculating the exact speed using the Puget Sound book, but the practical experience of interacting with the current is invaluable. And that's it. Thanks for tuning in, YouTube.